Hi, I'm James and thanks for tuning in to eBuyer. In this video, we're going to be taking a first look and overview at one of the brand new 11th generation Intel Core processors. We're going to be installing it into a snazzy Z590 motherboard from Asus ROG and covering off the important information that you need to know about both. Let's kick things off with the CPU. This is the 11700K and it's the 11th generation i7 chip in the lineup. It's overclockable, something our motherboard is going to facilitate really nicely. But with boost clock speeds of up to 5 GHz out of the box, you don't necessarily need to do so. Not only do you get great single threaded performance with those fast boost clock speeds, but 8 cores and 16 threads cover you off for multitasking really nicely too. Whether it's productivity oriented tasks like rendering, streaming or just gaming, the CPU covers you off very nicely. Let's take our processor out of the box and see exactly what it looks like. Here you can see the CPU itself. All of these gold chips are what will make contact with the pins on the CPU socket on the motherboard in just a moment's time. And one thing you want to look out for early on is a little gold triangle in the bottom left corner of the processor. We'll come back to this in a moment and that will make a lot more sense when we go to install it. We need a motherboard to install the processor into though. And that's where Asus's brand new Maximus 13 Hero board comes in. Let's take a look at some of the features on this board and why they might be helpful for gaming in 2021. If I'm being completely honest, I have actually used this motherboard in a couple of builds before. So I know a thing or two about features and performance and the chipset that it's using. This board sits on the Z590 chipset, which allows you to overclock both the CPU and the RAM if you so wish. At the centre of the motherboard, you've got the 1200 LGA socket, which is what we'll need to install our i7 chip. 1200 actually stands for the number of pins in the socket. Fun fact, if you didn't know that one. You've got four RAM DIMM slots here with support for memory overclocking. You've then got three PCIe uh, slots for connecting up expansion cards or graphics cards, followed finally by a couple of Gen 4 M.2 slots, both on the bottom and just below our top PCIe connector. Super fast Gen 4 SSDs provide speeds in the region of seven gigabytes per second, meaning you can get blazingly fast data transfer speeds using a Z590 board. That's not all the rear IO that is included is really solid and the IO shield comes pre-installed, saving you a bit of hassle later on. 10 gigabit USB 3 type A ports are a nice addition, while a pair of Thunderbolt ports are fantastic. Wi-Fi 6E tops things off with super fast Wi-Fi speeds at the cutting edge in 2021, giving you a well-rounded board that aesthetically, I think, looks fantastic. Installing the CPU chip itself is really simple. All you need to do is find the little gold triangle on the bottom left corner of the processor. This is the one we referred to a little bit earlier when we first took the processor out of the box. This is going to align with the corresponding triangle on the plastic CPU cover. Once again, this is the bottom left of the CPU socket, which is always the easiest way to remember things. You want to release the CPU socket by pushing the arm out and pulling it upwards. Leave the plastic protective cover on for now, as this will be dealt with a little bit later. With the processor nicely lined up, triangle to triangle, you can simply drop the CPU into place, making sure not to touch any of the pins on the CPU socket itself. Once you've done this, you can give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure it's seated correctly, and then you simply want to pop the cover back down. To do this, take the metal cover and slide it under the screw on the bottom of the socket. Then it's a case of pushing the arm down and our plastic cover will automatically pop off. You don't want to remove this yourself, let the CPU do all the hard work. And like that, the processor is installed. We next up need to install our cooler. If you're going to be water cooling this CPU for extra overclocking headroom, then your mileage is going to vary. But for now, we're going to stick with the default Intel cooler just to get our build ready to go. This cooler does actually have thermal paste pre-applied, so we haven't got to worry about that and it will easily seed on top of the processor, clipping down in each of the four corners. Once you're happy that the cooler is on, you can lift up the motherboard and just give the cooler a little bit of a wiggle to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And then we can proceed and screw the motherboard and CPU into the case today to finish off the initial process of any build. We've gone ahead and picked up a Neutron Lab case available exclusively at eBuyer for our motherboard installation. The first thing you want to do with any chassis is to take off both of the side panels. 
both the front glass panel and the rear metal panel. This will just give you a bit more room to work with and make everything that bit more accessible. There's one panel. And there is our second, and you can see it just opens the case up a great deal. If you're in a light environment as well, you'll find the standoff holes, which we'll come to in a moment, actually illuminate with the rear panel off, which can make things that little bit easier. For the next step of the process, you want to once again take your motherboard, and we need to locate each of the holes that go through the PCB itself. So you'll find three holes at the top, three holes across the middle, and three holes along the bottom. And these are all in line with each other in three columns to make things that bit easier. We then need to correlate these up with the standoffs in our case. You can see we've got three down the left hand side and three down the middle. They're all in the right locations. We just need to add an additional three for the far side of the motherboard. Standoffs are important as they not only support the weight of your motherboard, but they also provide a gap between the metal of the case and the PCB of the motherboard, making sure nothing grounds out and everything works nice and smoothly. Let's go ahead and add those three standoffs in before we screw the motherboard into place. With the standoffs installed, we can then go ahead and slide the motherboard into place, securing it through each of those nine holes. Remember, three at the top, three in the middle and three at the bottom, just like so. Once you've got the motherboard lined up over the standoffs, use the included case screws, which will vary on a chassis by chassis basis to secure the motherboard into place. And just like that, our 11th gen CPU and Z590 board are installed inside the case. We hope you found this video useful, especially if you're a new builder out there looking to build an 11th generation PC build. Thank you very much for tuning into eBuyer and we hope to see you again soon.